Today we're gonna look at the most extreme macro lens that has ever been created. The Laua Aurogon that goes anywhere from 10 times magnification to 50 times magnification. Never before has any company created a lens that you can put directly on a mirrorless camera or a DSLR that goes to these extreme magnifications. And it's actually not only one lens, it is a kit that comes in this nice suitcase. And uh, the part on the right is kind of the, the heart of the lens that you need to put in the front. And then you pick any of the four back parts that will give you the magnifications 10 times, 20 times, 35 times or 50 times. So you have to combine the right part with one of the left parts, depending on what magnification you want. And I have to really commend Laua for doing these kinds of extreme lenses that are niched to a very small subset of the market. I mean, there couldn't be too many people out there with a need for this kind of lens. Still, they make it because it didn't exist before and it needs to exist, right? Of course, there are lots of people doing macro photography at these extreme magnifications already but they typically use microscope lenses and the low Aragon comes in at I think around 1500 US dollars while a good microscope lens often costs even more so this could actually be a really good value for money kit and also on top of that it's a very convenient way to do high magnification macro photography because you don't need to buy a microscope lens an adapter for that microscope lens extension tubes or bellows with the Aurogon kit you can just put it on your camera very easily you can switch magnifications very easily so it makes the whole process uh, a lot more convenient at the front lens you have an aperture ring, but it's not your standard f2.8 or f4 or f5.6 apertures. Because at these magnifications you typically use something called numerical aperture, which is an absolute aperture uh, and uh, it is a dimensionless number. Uh, this lens has a numerical aperture from 0.15 to 0.5. And when I compare it to high magnification microscope lenses, it seems like 0.5 in maximum numerical aperture is really good. It's uncommon for it to be much higher than that. So even though I'm not an expert in microscope lenses, it seems like this is a really good offering from Laowa. This lens kit comes for a whole bunch of different camera mounts. You can look at them here <laughs> and see if you have the camera mount needed. Otherwise you can probably adapt from one of these to your camera mount. So let's take a look at some photos I took with this kit. First, let's talk a little bit about what you need to use a kit like this. As you can see here, there are a few parts involved. First of all, when you take a photo at 10, 20, 35 or 50 times magnification, the depth of field will be extremely small, like extremely, extremely small. This is an example of one shot that I took with this lens and it's really hard to see <laughs> that anything at all is sharp. So what you typically need to do is that you need to stack at least 100 photos, often several hundred photos, and then put them together in a software like Helicon Focus that I use after the fact. And to be able to stack at this magnification in a good way, you need a steady setup with some kind of focusing rail, and I would warmly recommend a motorized focusing rail. I use my Miops slider that works great for this except for their really buggy app that drives me insane. I had to switch from my iPhone to my iPad to get it to not freeze all the time. Then, as you might know in macro photography, the closer you focus, the higher the magnification, the darker it gets. And at 35 or 50 times magnification, it gets extremely dark. So it's pretty much a requirement to use a flash or you could use really long shutter speeds. But that is also a bit risky because then you have a very big risk that you step on the floor and create a very small vibration that will make your image blurry. So I prefer to use a flash. I used my Godox TT685 at 1 8th around there somewhere in strength. 
And then I set the numerical aperture on all these photos to 0.5, which is the widest aperture opening. And the reason for that is that you run into a lot of diffraction when you focus at these magnifications. And as you know, the larger the aperture, the less magnification. So uh, I shot all my example photos in this video at 0.5 in numerical aperture. Then I used a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, uh, which is the fastest my flash can sync on my camera. And I used an ISO as low as possible, between 100 and 350 or so. And let's take a look at some of the photos that I took this way. As you can see, I put the lens and the camera on a bunch of books. And the reason for this is that I could not mount the camera on the focus slider because it would be far too front heavy. Not only do I risk breaking the camera mount, also uh, whenever the slider takes a step forward, the whole rig will wobble a lot because it's so front heavy. So this is one of my feedbacks to Laowa about this lens that you should provide some kind of tripod color together with this kit so that you can have the center of mass close to where you mount the rig on your focus slider. Otherwise it's very hard to use this. I solved this problem myself by simply putting the whole camera and lens on a bunch of books and then having the subject on the slider instead. But it would have been preferable to have a tripod color of some sort and Laowa said that they are working on this and by the time you see this video they might actually have one ready that you can buy together with this lens and I would highly recommend you to get that together with this kit. Another criticism I had to Laowa about this kit is that there was no manual whatsoever when I got it and unless you are an expert in microscopes or extreme magnification macro photography, you will not really know how to use this kit unless you have some kind of instruction booklet or manual. First of all, when you focus stack you need to know what step size should I use between each shot to get a good sharp photo without taking too many steps. And I actually went to Serene Stacker's manual pages. They have a great part there where they have tables for this. And I used one table, I'm, like, I'm not an expert in this, this is kind of one of the first times I go beyond 10 times magnification, but I figured this table should probably be useful even though I'm using a different lens. And I looked up the aperture, which is 0.5 in numerical aperture, and then you need to use this step length. So I configured my MEOP slider to use that step length, and it gave me good results. The reason the magnification is not a part of this table is that you are severely limited by diffraction, so the magnification doesn't actually matter. Uh, the diffraction will kill your sharpness anyway, and this is the suggested step size to get the best you can despite all the diffraction that will be in your photo. Then when I arranged the shot, I simply put the flash as close as possible to the subject and also I used a diffuser to get a softer light. And then I uh, tried to place the subject such that the first frame is sharp on the front of the subject and then I just uh, went backwards until I had a decent amount of the photo in focus. Uh, usually 100 to 150 frames which was what I used uh, in these sample photos that I'm gonna show you. So I began quite simply with a ballpoint pen and this is at 10 times magnification and I cropped the photo a bit. This is a stack of 155 photos that I put together in Helicon Focus. And uh, uh, it looks pretty cool, right? Uh, ballpoint pen, you have never seen it this big, I bet. And then I tried the same thing at 20 times magnification and now uh, it's not cropped and it covers almost the whole frame. And uh, also 155 shots. Then I tried a coin at 20 times magnification. And uh, as you can see, I didn't get the whole uh, surface in focus. On the right here you have a bit of blur. Uh, but I got uh, a bit of the pattern here in uh, focus. This is 95 photos stacked. And uh, yeah, you get pretty nice uh, detail and sharpness, even though you can definitely see the diffraction. But this is something 
uh, you will see no matter what lens you use if you shoot at 20 times magnification. Then I wanted to try something more extreme, so I mounted the 50 times magnification lens and I calculated that at 50 times magnification on a full frame sensor your subject will cover the whole frame if it is just 0.72 millimeters wide and 0.72 millimeters is not a lot. So I decided to take one of my hairs from my beard. I know that this hair looks like it could be from somewhere else, but I assure you this is from my beard. And I tried to arrange it so that I could shoot it. And this is a stack at 50 times magnification of uh, one hair from my beard. Uh, 104 photos was required to get uh, the whole frame pretty sharp and you see this glare here and I'm pretty sure that is due to diffraction. Um, this is what it looks like at 50 times magnification no matter what you shoot. At least with this lens at the wide open 0.5 in numerical aperture. Then I brought out my friend George that you have seen in many videos. He's quite famous these days and started by shooting his eye at 10 times magnification. His eye has a lot of detail so I figured this could be a really good sample photo. And I think it turned out quite nicely. Uh, these are two different uh, settings in Helicon Focus that gives slightly different results. It's the method A or C that I'm alternating between here. These are usually the ones that I find the most useful. And uh, then I tried photographing George's eye at uh, 35 times magnification because then you pretty much cover the whole uh, frame with the eye. And I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the results. Uh, looks quite nice. I took uh, two photos here. This one is 157 photos stacked. And then I did a bit of a deeper one. This one is 191 photos stacked. And then finally, this is part of George's shell. Uh, nice green colors. This is 283 photos stacked. And uh, for all these photos I used the settings that I told you earlier. So to assess the image quality of these photos, I think that is actually beyond my pay grade or my expertise because I pretty much never use microscope lenses and the only time I've used microscope lenses it's only been up to 4 times magnification. With the Auragon you have between 10 times and 50 times magnification. And honestly, it's really hard for me to assess whether uh, the sharpness is good or not. I think I have a feeling that this is good quality optics. And I have a feeling that the blurriness you see in these photos is 100% due to diffraction. But I cannot tell you for sure because I don't have anything to compare with. I've never done this kind of extreme macro photography. Uh, what I did notice though was that you have a very slight vignette in the very corners on a full frame camera so I had to crop the photos a little bit uh, to get rid of that. Uh, other than that I don't see any issues with the optical quality. I think I think my, my gut feeling is that this kit performs well. So who is this kit for? Well. I think it is great if you want to get into extreme macro photography, if you want to stack dead insects and get like very close details and you want a kit that is easy to use where you don't have to order lots of different microscope lenses and adapters and stuff like that, you just want to get started quickly then you could buy this kit, you could use a regular flash which I used and you can also get a focus slider, for example, the Miop slider, which is pretty good despite the software bugs that often pester me with this rig. And you could get really nice stacks without too much effort. And I do have to say that when I look at prices of good microscope lenses, I think that this kit where you get four different magnifications in one kit for $1,500 is probably a pretty good value for money as far as I can tell. Thank you for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it and see you soon again.